I've got a very rare item that's even becoming more rare as we speak, and that is a uh, 0 to 350 picofarad capacitor, variable capacitor. However, uh, I bought several of them at a company that used to uh, used to repair TVs and radios. I think it was the guy's father who did it, and now he's selling out everything. So this was only like a buck fifty. However, when I got it home, I noticed that the plates weren't turning. I don't feel bad because I bought five of them for a yeah, dollar fifty a piece, and I thought I would tear this one apart. It's it's not going to be repairable, but at least we can see what's going on inside there. I've already started loosening these little nuts on the back. There's four of them, so that you wouldn't have to suffer through that. Um, I opened one of these up as a kid, and yeah. I don't remember anything more than opening it up and I don't know, I may have done it violently, like just breaking the, breaking the thing apart. These little nuts might be useful for something. Let's see, focus, focus, there we are. I don't know if this cover is glued on. I might have to might have to do something violent with it. I think I'm seeing glue around here. So just a second, let me get my one of my implements of destruction. Let's see if I can pry this thing apart. My guess is this is. It's probably 50 plus years old. Make sure I try to keep my hands out of the way as much as possible. These appear to be silver plated, which is, yeah, they're not just, they're not just like tinned with solder, which is very nice. Did I get it? There we go. Okay, so, wow, in the bottom, there's a spacer. I need a small pointer. There's a spacer right there, and, hmm, oh, it's stuck in the grease. Okay, so let's see, yeah, everything's still in focus. So these four things right here are trimmer capacitors, and you can adjust the total capacitance, and they're connected here, one, two, three, four, so you can see those tabs, and then here are the main ground tabs for the whole for the whole device. So that's the outer cover. Now let's look at this thing, it's falling apart in my hands. Um, yeah, I've already, already lost one of these contacts that should be here. Yeah, that contact should go on there like that. But yeah, it's because everything is held together by those four nuts we just removed. It is now just falling apart, spacer, spacer. Um, and here are the plates. Now you can see there are two sets of plates. One of them is attached to this side and one of them is attached to the center. And you can also see that as this plate moves around, it 
covers and uncovers this, so the two of them overlap, and the more they overlap, the more the capacitance goes up. See that? Now I cannot tell you why this has disconnected from the main shaft, but it has. Okay, that's unscrewing. Wow, and it's just a stack of these. So we have a plate that's connected to the center. We have an insulator. Can you see that? Yeah, and the light reflects off of it. And we have the copper one. And then we have another one that's connected to the center. Do we? Yeah, nope, we have an insulator. And the spacer, these spacers just fell off of there. And then that's going to repeat. Oh, interesting, it changed. You notice it changed from a uh, steel uh, going to copper on this side. It has now changed to aluminum. That's interesting. Yeah, so it went from that to that. Now we're back to the, one of these things, that shape. Oops, that fell off the layer below. Um, this just seems to be polypropylene or something. I don't know. It's definitely not mylar. And yeah, just one after another. It seems that these center ones were just held on by friction. And the nut came undone, probably a function of time and sitting, and then it was probably forced, got sticky, and then it was forced and it popped. Okay, so that's going to repeat. This whole section right here is going to repeat. So we're not going to we're not going to torture ourselves by just doing that one layer at a time. Get those off of there. And there has to be, there, there's two 350 microfarad, or picofarad rather, microfarad, picofarad capacitors inside here. And you can see where it jammed up. This is probably why it failed. Somebody forced it and you can see it got all wrinkly right there. And yeah, these uh, insulators right there are torn and folded and yeah, it's a mess. So... I suppose if I wanted a single 360, I could I could reassemble half of this, but I'm not going to. I respect my sanity more than that. Okay, so some of these posts, so this post is insulated here, and it's a connection on this side, so you can see the difference. There's connection, and that part, that part of that post is insulated. Here is the ground, so it goes to the center shaft right there. And, and then we go back to, interesting. Yeah, so it just repeats the pattern over and over again. Huh. Okay, well, we know what, how that works, so let's get that off of there. And, yeah, see that? It's all mangled up. That almost had to be done at the factory. And, oh, look at that. That's all mangled up, too, right there. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, this, this stuff is... It's hard to find, and then when you do find it, it can be in any shape or form. Yep. Okay, and there's the central shaft, and the last plate is on there. And 
let's see. Yeah, it just slips through there. There's no, there's no bearing or anything. It's oily. I mean, I can feel the oil and I can, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can get it to glint for you. There we go. Yeah, so it's oily. And then there is the shaft. And of course the knob fits on there like that. And the contact point. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so that is a dual a dual 350 picofarad variable capacitor. Well, hope you found that useful and interesting in your electronic experimentations.